Hi everyone, I'm Patrick from the Assembly AI team and today we learn about Generative Adversarial Networks or short GANs. So you might have seen this popular example where GANs generate fake images of humans and they look incredibly real. GANs are indeed really powerful and are one of the most fascinating ideas in deep learning in recent years. So today we have a quick look at the theory behind GANs and then we code one from scratch using PyTorch. So let's get started. All right, so let's look at the theory first. And I promise that this won't be too difficult because the idea is actually brilliant. It's simple but super powerful. So GANs learn to generate new data with the same statistics as the training set. And GANs consist of two networks playing an adversarial game against each other. That's why the name is Generative Adversarial Networks. So the goal is to generate fake data that is as close as possible to the training data. And then we have these two networks that play a game against each other. So how does this work exactly? So the two networks are called the generator and the discriminator. And the generator produces fake data and tries to trick the discriminator. And the discriminator inspects the fake data and then determines if it's real or fake. So this is like a detective. And then they play against each other. So this is basically the training. So first they are initialized randomly and then they are trained simultaneously. And this means we have to minimize two losses. So we also use two optimizer and we use the binary cross entropy loss. So I'm not going into detail here about the loss formula, but I will link another resource below the video if you want to learn more about this. And yeah, this is basically the whole concept. And now before we jump to the code, let's look at an example. So later we use the MNIST dataset. So now the generator tries to generate MNIST images. So these digits from zero to nine, and then tries to trick the discriminator. And then they play against each other and both sides get better and better. And in the beginning, they don't know anything. So they are randomly initialized. So the generator just produces noise. So random data that might look like this. And then the discriminator looks at this and can also look at real data and compare it. And then it might easily say, yeah, this is fake. But then the learning or the training continues and then the generator comes up with new data and this might look something like this. And then again, the discriminator looks at it and it can simply still say, yes, yeah, still fake. But then at some point, the generator gets better and better and then the discriminator might be tricked and say, yeah, this is actually real data. So obviously in this example, the data is still not perfect, but of course also the discriminator is still not perfect. So it also has to improve. And then this continues and both sides get better and better. And eventually we get a, or should get a generated data that should not be easily distinguishable from the original data. And yeah, this is how it works. So now let's jump to the code and see how we can implement this. All right, so here I'm in a Google Colab and I already prepared some code for the start, but later we will write the rest of the code together. So I recommend that you just copy this Colab into your own folder and then follow me here. So I will put the link in the description. And the first thing you should do is set the runtime. So here we can click on change runtime type and select a GPU. Then the training will be much faster. And then the first thing we do is we say pip install PyTorch Lightning because we also use PyTorch Lightning here to make the code a little bit shorter. And I also want to mention that there is an official GAN tutorial on the PyTorch Lightning website that is pretty similar to my code, but in this case, they just use normal linear layers. And in our case, we use CNNs, so it's a little bit different, but yeah, this is also a great resource that you should check out. So yeah, we install this here. Then here we do all the imports we need, so Torch and Torch Vision and the different modules. Then we also use Py, uh, Matplotlib and PyTorch Lightning. And then here we set some parameters, for example, a random seed, the batch size, we check if we have GPUs and if we have uh, multiple CPU cores. And then the first thing we do is we create a 
data module that inherits from PyTorch Lightning .lightning data module. So this is responsible to um, create the data loaders for us for the training, validation and test set. And the way this works is that we have to implement the init function. So here we simply define the parameters and we also define the transformations. So here we convert from images to a tensor and then we normalize it. So this is the mean and the standard deviation from the MNIST images. Then we have to implement the prepared data function. So here we call the built in MNIST data and we can set download equals true and then this will download the data. And one time we say training equals true for the training set and then one time training equals false for the test set. Then we also implement the setup function. So here we further split the training data into training and validation set by applying this random split function. And yeah, for the test set, we simply also create the MNIST data by saying training equals false. And in all steps, we already apply the transformations. And then we can implement these three functions, the train data loader, the validation data loader, and the test data loader. And they are all pretty simple. So they just return the data loader with the corresponding uh, data set. And then we can also set the batch size and the number of workers. So yeah, this is what we have to do to get the data loaders. And then we have to implement the two networks. So the discriminator and the generator. And they are both vanilla PyTorch modules. So we can mix and match PyTorch and PyTorch Lightning. So for the discriminator, we create a class that inherits from nn.module. And like I said, the discriminator is like a detective. So it has the task to detect if it's fake or no fake. So in the end, we only need one output that must be between zero and one. And we only have to implement the init function and the forward function. And basically here you could do whatever we want, but in the end we only want one output that is between zero and one. So you could just use linear layers, but in this example I want to show you how we can use CNNs. So we use two convolutional 2D layers. Then we also use a dropout layer in the 2D case and in the end we use two linear layers. And yeah, we always have to be careful that we have the correct input and output sizes and then at the very end we need one output. So yeah, in the init function we simply create all the layers and then in the forward function we apply all layers. And we also apply max pooling and activation functions. So here the ReLU activation function. So yeah, first the first convolution with max pool and ReLU, then the second convolution with a dropout max pool and ReLU. Then we reshape the data so we can feed it to the fully connected layers. Then we apply the first fully connected layer, so the linear layer with an activation function, a dropout and the second uh, fully connected layer. And then in the very end, we apply the sigmoid function. So this takes care that the output is between zero and one. So this is our discriminator. And now the generator basically works the other way around. So we also create a class that inherits from nn.module. And here this gets as a parameter the number of latent dimensions. So this is a scalar value. And basically from this value we upsample to a output that is in the shape that the original images is. So 1 by 28 by 28. And the values are between minus 1 and 1 here. So here we also use a linear layer. Then we use a convolution transpose 2D layer, so two times actually. And then in the end, we apply a normal convolution to put it back again into this shape. And then in the forward pass, we apply all these steps. So first we apply the linear layer with a ReLU activation, then we reshape. Then we apply the convolution transposed layer. This will upsample the data to be in this shape. Then again, a activation function. 
Then the second convolution transposed layer, this will put it into this shape. Then again, a activation function and at the very end, a normal convolution, which will put it back into this shape and then no activation at the end. So yeah, this are, these are the two uh, networks that we need and now we put them together in one class. So let's do this together. So here we want to create one class that we call GAN and this inherits from PyTorch Lightning dot Lightning module. And then we have to implement a few functions so that it works with PyTorch Lightning. So first of all, we need the init function with self and then we also give it the number of latent dimensions and this should be 100 by default. Then we also give it a learning rate and by default this is 0, 0, 002. So you might actually want to play around with this a little bit. So it's very, the learning is very sensitive to the learning rate. So it's very important that you have find a good one here. So yeah, by default, just try this one. Then the first thing we do, we call the super initializer. So super init like this. And then here we store or first save the hyper parameters. So we say self dot save hyper parameters. This will make it accessible everywhere later. And then we create our two networks. So we say self dot generator equals the generator network. And this gets one parameter. This is the latent dimension equals. And now we can access the hyper parameter by saying self dot HP params dot and now we can use latent dim. So this is the same um, name that we use here for the parameter name. So this is our generator and then we do the same thing for discriminator. So we initialize a discriminator by saying this is a discriminator and this doesn't get any inputs. And then we create a random noise that we want to use later to test the images. So we say self dot validation C equals torch dot rand N. And then it should be six images and we use self dot HP params dot latent underscore dim for the uh, second size. And yeah, this is the init function. Then we need to implement the forward function, which gets self and the input tensor. So we call this C. And the forward pass in the GAN is actually just the generator. So here we can say return self dot generator. And this gets the input, uh, the tensor as a input. So this is the forward pass. Then let's create a function to define the loss. So we call this adversarial underscore loss also with self and then it gets y hat. So the predicted labels and the actual labels. And here we, as I said in the beginning, we use the binary cross entropy. So this is just a one one liner. So we say return f dot binary cross entropy. And then here we feed it with y hat and y. Then we need the training step. So define training step. So this is actually a function from PyTorch Lightning that we have to implement. And then everything later uh, will be taken care of uh, for us. So this gets self, then it also gets a batch, then it gets the batch index, and it also gets the optimizer index. And for now, let's just say pass. So we do this as last step. Then the next function we have to implement from PyTorch Lightning is the configure uh, optimizer function. And this only gets self. And it's actually called configure optimizer s optimizers. 
And here we can access the learning rate by saying lr equals self dot h params dot um, lr and then lr and then we create two optimizers, one for the generator and one for the discriminator. So we say opt g equals and here we say torch dot optim dot Adam, for example, which is always a good choice. And then we want to optimize self.generator.parameters. And we also give it the learning rate LR equals LR. Then we copy and paste this and do the same thing for the optimizer for the discriminator. So opt D. And here we optimize self.discriminator.parameters and we use the same learning rate. And then we return those. So we say return and then as a list opt underscore G and opt underscore D. And as second parameter, we return a empty list. So this would be if you use a scheduler as well. And then there is one more function that we want to implement for the PyTorch Lightning module. So this is called the on epoch end um, function. This also only gets self. And here after each epoch, I simply want to plot a few uh, generated images to see how our fake data looks like. So here I call self.plot images and this is a function that I simply copy and paste for you. So let me copy and paste this in here. Um, so this will be one function. And what we do here is here we use this validation C that we created up here. So this is a random noise with six images and this number of latent dimensions. So here we use this and then we also use this type S function. This will basically move it to the GPU or not if we don't use a GPU. Then we call self.c. So self.c will um, execute the forward pass. So this will execute the generator. So this will generate some images and then we put it back to the CPU. And then here I have a, a small code snippet to generate some images with matplotlib and then plot this as a grid. So yeah, this is what we do after each epoch. And now the only thing left to do is to implement the training step. So let's do this. So here, um, first of all, here I noticed I have a typo. So this is just self.h params. And yeah, now let's do this. So here first we want to unpack the batch. So we call this the real images and then just an underscore because we don't need the labels. And this comes from the batch. And then again, we create a sample noise data. So here we call this C equals torch dot rand N. And now it gets the shape of the real EMGS e and then the first dimension zero. And a second um, uh, number it gets the number of latent dims so self dot h params dot latent dim and then we again have to move it to the gpu if we use one so we say c equals c dot type underscore s and then we want to use the same type as the image tensor and then we make a if statement for both optimizers. So in the first um, case, we want to train the generator. So the first optimizer opt G. So here we check if now optimizer underscore index equals equals zero. Then we train the generator. And here I will write the formula for you. So here we want to maximize 
the lock off and here we use the discriminator and then the generator off C and C will be um, fake images. So yeah, again, I will put a reference below the video where you can read more about the loss function. But yeah, this is basically the formula together with this binary cross entropy loss. So let's do this. So first we want to call the generator with C. So we, and this will be the fake images. So here we can call self dot C. So again, self dot C will uh, execute the forward pass, which will execute the generator. So this is this part. Then we need the discriminator and this will be the Y hat. So the predicted labels. So here we call self dot this criminator and we put in the fake images. And now as real Y, so as real labels, we say Y equals, and this will be a tensor of simply once. And here again, we say real images dot size zero. And as second thing, we just say one. And then again, we have to move it to the GPU. So again, we can use um, type S. So here we say Y equals Y type as the real images. And then we create the or calculate the loss. So we call this G loss equals self dot adversarial loss. So the function. And this gets y hat and y. And then we return this. So PyTorch Lightning knows what to do with this loss. So we create a lock dictionary. And this is a dictionary with the value, um, with the key g loss. And we put in the g loss in here. And then we return a, another full dictionary that, this, that has this included. So first of all, we need to have the key loss in here and the loss will be the G loss. Then we can also say the progress underscore bar gets also the lock dictionary and we um, for logging if we want to use this later for example in the tensor board then we can also use this key and this also gets the log dictionary so yeah this is what we have to do for the generator and then we do a similar things for the um, discriminator so if optimizer index equals equals one. And let's first write a comment here. So here we want to train the discriminator. And now again, I will say what we have to maximize. So here we want to maximize the log of D of X and X will be the original images plus and then here the log of one minus D of G of C. So um, let's go over this and then it might become clearer what this means. So here we want to measure the discriminator's ability to classify a real from generated images. So we want to check how well can it label as real. So how well, can it label as real? And then also, how well can it label the generated images as fake? And these are essentially those two parts. So for the first one, um, the code is very similar to this one. So we create y hat real equals, and then we, again, self dot this criminator. And now we don't put in fake images, but here we put in real, the real images. 
And this is the Y hat reel and the normal Y reel. So the actual labels. In this case, it's also just torch dot ones like we use here. And then again, we have to move it to the GPU if we use one. So Y real equals Y real type is real images. And then we calculate the real loss equals self dot adversarial loss of Y hat real and Y hat. So this is the first part. So this is very similar to here. And now we need this part. Um, so here Y um, real. And now how well can it label as fake? So here we call this Y hat fake. And then again self dot discriminator of self with C. And now we have to be careful. So um, self dot C will basically generate fake images. And we already did this here and we want to use the same ones here. But when we um, execute this, then this will do calculations on the graph. And we don't want to do this twice. So that's why here we call C self C dot detach. So this will create a new tensor that is detached from the computational graph. So be careful here. And yeah, this is our Y hat fake and then the Y fake equals and this is very similar to here. So then again, we want to move this to the um, GPU. So Y fake equals Y fake. And now we have to be careful. So now this part says one minus this. So actually, if we have a look at the binary cross entropy formula, then we find out that if we put in zeros here, then we actually end up with this formula. So here we put in torch dot zeros. So yeah, again, I recommend that you just double check this for yourself. And then we also calculate the fake loss again with self dot adversarial loss. And here we put in Y hat fake and Y fake. And then the total loss is the average. So we call this the D loss. So the discriminator loss equals and here we say real loss plus the fake loss divided by two. And then the same as we do here, we create a log dictionary and return this. And in this case, we call this D loss and use D loss here and also here. And now this is everything that we need for the training step. So let's create a new code cell. And now we want to set everything up. So we create a data module by saying this is the MNIST data module that we created. Then we create a model. So this is our GAN. Then again, um, and now before I want to train this, I actually want to call this plot images one so that we see that in the beginning we simply plot noise. So let's say model dot plot images and then let's run everything and see if it works until here. And yes, so here we have the first generated images and as we can see, this is just noise. And now we want to train our GAN. So we call a, we create a PyTorch lightning dot trainer. And here we can specify the maximum number of epochs equals, let's use 20. And then we can also use the GPUs equals the max 
um, what would we call it in the beginning? Max, no, available GPUs. So let's put this also into our trainer. And then we simply say trainer.fit the model and we also put in the data module and then we run this and when we execute this you might see that after each epoch we should print the images. So let's do this. And we get a type error. So in this part I forgot to call shapes. So here in the training step we must say real images dot shape and then zero. So now again we have to run this cell. Then down here we again run this cell. Let's again plot this. This should be the same random noise. And now let's run the trainer again. And training is done. So now we can scroll down and see after the first epoch. So this is actually, yeah, after epoch zero, we get this image. So it still looks like random noise. Epoch 1, we have this images, then this, it still looks like noise. But then after Epoch 4, it starts getting better and it's starting to look like images. So now let's scroll down a little bit. And yeah, so here it still looks a bit noisy. But for example, this might be a 3, this might be a 4, this might be a 0. So yeah, it's starting to get into shape. And yeah, our code works. And yeah, I actually recommend you that you play around with the hyperparameters a little bit and also maybe increase the maximum epochs and then test this for yourself. Again, the collab will be, the link to the collab will be in the description below. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did so, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And then I hope to see you next time. Bye.